Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be continuing talking about masses of various stars, and specifically in this video we're going to be talking about how much mass various stars lose due to fusion, due to the fact that they all produce energy. We're going to compare them to our sun, and I'm going to show you the math behind it. Welcome to What The Math. So uh, this is actually a continuation of a two-part video series, but specifically this relates to a video I made a long time ago where I talked about how much mass our own sun loses. I'm going to briefly um, review some of the findings from that video and also just from various studies uh, that scientists did in the last few years. And overall, we actually um, are pretty certain that our sun loses approximately... Uh, 4 to the uh, times 10 to the power of 33 ergs of energy per second. Now, this might mean nothing to you. But just to give you perspective, by going back to Earth here and just placing the mass uh, to represent how much this is in terms of masses per second, uh, that's about 4 million tons every single second lost due to fusion. So let's maybe place a rock here just to represent this. I'm going to place a random asteroid in orbit around Earth. Uh, it's going to be right here, and we're going to give it that particular mass. So here we need to decrease this by a little bit to make it this amount. So there is that mass that represents the amount of mass that the sun loses every single second because of fusion. Now there are other factors involved in mass loss, like for example our sun also produces solar winds that uh, make it lose um, some mass as well, but it's about maybe half of this amount. And we're going to ignore this just for the sakes of this video, because we're only going to focus on fusion. So this is how much sun uses up every single second. If you want to find out how much this would be in 10 seconds, you just multiply this by 10, obviously. Um, and uh, this kind of creates a relationship that you can establish with other stars as well, and also with the sun itself. But after about, I guess, 30 million years, this mass will be equivalent to the mass of Earth. In other words, approximately every uh, 30 million years, our sun loses an equivalent of Earth in masses. So that's kind of cool and interesting, but let's compare this to other stars as well. So, okay, first of all, disclaimer. This only works for right now. Over time, our sun will actually uh, start consuming a little bit more mass and will actually increase in luminosity. And there is a, a well-established relationship that represents that. This is actually directly from Wikipedia and from a study uh, back in 2010 uh, by a person called Ribus. And this is what it looks like. So basically, after, let's say, 9 billion years of lifetime, our sun will actually consume more, uh, more mass and will have a little bit more luminosity as well. Uh, so this is not a, a very easy to establish relationship. So there is actually an age that that's important as well. To make matters a little bit more complex, there's also a relationship between the actual mass of the star and how much mass it loses. So for anything that's a red dwarf, the uh, luminosity to mass relationship is represented using this formula. For anything that's uh, approximate mass of the sun, so this uh, kind of includes the vast majority of neighboring stars, this is kind of the relationship we have. And for anything that's a little bit more massive, you also have to kind of multiply it by 1.4, but reduce the power. And then for supermassive stars, the relationship changes completely. So there's actually um, a lot of variability. And so it's kind of hard to just find one formula for all of the stars. But we can use uh, a kind of an approximation here. And we're going to establish this using what we discovered in the previous video, where I talked about how, uh, depending on luminosity, you can actually establish the lifespan of a star. And the relationship compared to the sun was this. So using this, we can kind of estimate um, how much mass other stars will be losing. And just to give you a refresher, this is actually what's happening inside those stars. So basically we have hydrogen molecules that are uh, converted to unstable helium molecules, release uh, some neutrinos and also some uh, positrons, and eventually turn into helium molecule, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. And uh, they keep doing this until there is no more hydrogen left, and then the helium burning process begins. Uh, that process is very short though, so for the most part, we only concern ourselves with the hydrogen to helium conversion. 
Because this uses up mass, uh, eventually the star becomes less massive, but it's not usually a very significant amount. As a matter of fact, for our sun, the amount is ridiculously insignificant. Every single second, even though it uses up um, this much mass, uh, this is so insignificant in comparison to the entire mass of our sun that we don't really have to worry about it too much. So if even after 30 million years, the sun uses up like one mass of Earth, you have to remember that inside the sun, there are approximately 333,000 masses of Earth. So it still has a lot to go. Anyway, so let's uh, compare this to some other stars. So let's start with uh, smaller stars, like for example, um, red dwarfs. And we're just going to take a look at Proxima b, uh, which is the closest star to us. And let's just start by taking a look at the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri, which is actually a red dwarf. And because of this, it's uh, only about 12% the mass of the sun. It's also less luminous, it produces a lot less light, and thus uh, uses up a lot less of its own mass as well. So let's do some calculations here and find out how much mass it loses every single second in comparison to our sun. And the easiest way to calculate this is to, well, go to Wikipedia and look up the luminosity values for Proxima Centauri. But instead of you looking at the visual luminosity, we're going to be looking at bolometric, which is actually a little bit uh, more accurate for uh, stars like red dwarfs, because it actually implies that we're looking at other wavelengths as well. So here we're talking about infrared that is not actually visible to us, and um, ultraviolet as well. But there's other wavelengths like radio emissions that might be um, significant for some other types of stars as well. So the bolometric luminosity implies that in terms of ratio of how much energy is produced uh, in compared to our sun, uh, Proxima Centauri produces about 588 times uh, less energy than our sun. And this also implies that it must be using up this much less mass as well. In other words, in comparison to our own sun, the amount of mass that Proxima Centauri loses is right here. This is a much, much smaller rock in comparison to our sun, and also implies that it takes about 588 years for Proxima Centauri to lose as much mass as our own sun. Well, let's look at larger stars, because that's where things get a little bit more interesting. Let's start with, um, I guess, a star like Rigel, which is relatively bright. It's one of the brightest stars in our night skies. And the bolometric luminosity for Rigel is 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5. Uh, which is a number that looks like this, 120,000. So that's how many more masses it loses per second. And if we were to put this as a rock in Universe Sandbox, it would look like this. It's a significantly larger rock. As a matter of fact, this is a pretty large asteroid at this point. That's about 3.3 kilometers in, uh, in radius. So Rigel, every second, eats up an asteroid-sized uh, material. And so this is where things get obviously more interesting. Remember, Rigel is about 21 to possibly 22 masses of the sun. So it's, it's definitely larger than our sun, but it's using up a tremendous amount of energy in comparison. But with larger stars, things get even more interesting. With uh, more extreme stars, like for example, Betelgeuse, that's probably one of the more famous stars out there, uh, it also loses a tremendous amount of energy due to solar winds. And so its total mass loss is equivalent to a single Earth per year. And if it's if you convert this to per second, this is what you're going to get. An object that is, well, it's a lot more massive. It's about uh, a thousand times more massive than Rigel per second. And it's also an asteroid that's about 24 kilometers in radius. So for some unknown reason, Betelgeuse is losing a tremendous amount of energy and tremendous amount of mass, and we're still not entirely sure why, but we know that Betelgeuse is basically at its last legs at this point. It's going to go supernova really, really soon. Uh, and so when the stars, right before stars go supernova, they seem to be losing a lot more mass and energy than they would be otherwise. But then there is also the most massive star we've ever discovered, which is called R136A1. It's a star in a nearby galaxy of large Magellanic Cloud. And with that star, it is ridiculous how much mass it loses, but obviously a lot of this is still speculation because we can't really directly calculate it, it's just a little bit too far away. If we use the same approach though, if we actually look at its luminosity 
And I guess ignore the fact that it also possibly has a lot of uh, solar winds as well. Um, we can kind of estimate the amount to be 8.7 million times the luminosity of our sun, which implies that this is the amount of mass that this particular star loses every second. It's significantly less than Betelgeuse, but it's also because it's not really in its sort of pre-supernova stages just yet. So it, it, this will increase dramatically as the star approaches its supernova stage. And once again, this is how much the Sun loses, and this is how much Proxima Centauri loses. So in terms of mass loss per second, um, a lot of these stars basically lose a lot more than you can even imagine. And what's interesting is that um, this relationship is obviously exponential and increases with the mass of the star and also with its age as well. So the closer the star is to its final stages, the more mass it starts losing. So that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to show you the relationship between the mass loss of the star and of course the mass of the star itself. And as you can see, Betelgeuse just swallowed everything. In terms of uh, how this relates to our own sun and how it relates to stars that we might be interested in, this implies that the smaller the star, the more interesting it is to us because it also suggests that stars will live much longer and will lose less mass. And let's just actually put video just here for a comparison just so you can see how insignificant this mass is in comparison to the actual size of Betelgeuse. And there it is. It's a very, very, very small part of Betelgeuse itself. This is how much it loses every second. Now, how does it relate to what we might be interested in studying in relation to our um, exploration of various exoplanets and stars? Well, all of this implies that um, stars that are similar to our sun can also be studied using uh, uh, this particular phenomenon. And we can then establish if a star is more stable or not based on its luminosity and how much mass it loses. All of this can also be used to uh, estimate the stability of various red dwarf stars because red dwarfs are super interesting to us since they have much longer lifespans and since they seem to have a lot higher chance for terrestrial exoplanets to be established around them. So if we can find a very, very unique red dwarf that has very specific luminosity that's stable compared to other red dwarfs, we might be able to find a planet that could become our new home there. Other than that, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully you now you know a little bit more about how much mass various stars will lose over time and can actually calculate it yourself now. And if you want to learn more about this, come back tomorrow or come back in some of the future videos where we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.